Welcome to the show. Today, I am going to talk about uh, social credit, social credit systems, and why I don't really think there's anything wrong with social credit if it's done properly. So the first thing that one must look at, I think, is individual autonomy. And each person is their own human being, their own entity. They should not be part of a collective, part of a uh, this whole idea that communitarianism has. No, the individual is ultimate. The individual is the most important person in the world to that individual. And one should live for themselves, not for others. And so one of the challenges that comes along, if you have a social credit system like the one that uh, China uh, has, is that all of the values, like what is good and what is bad about a person, is set by a central authority. Well, the central authority might have different values than you have. And you know, as humans, you've heard me talk about values a lot. We each have a different set of preferred values, of subjective values. And I've got a little list here and I'm gonna read you and you're gonna notice, notice that some of these are opposite from each other. So one is honesty. And then kind of the opposite of that would be tactfulness. So being really blatantly honest, um, like some of my friends who come from a culture and an ethnic uh, religious background, they are very direct about what they say. And they say, Shepard, you are looking like you are very fat. You've been eating too much. That's what they'll say. And there's no tact. It's just very blunt and in your face. Well, that's honesty. Isn't that a good thing? That's awesome. Well, then somebody on the other side might argue, well, yeah, but that's not being tactful. Being tactful is a higher value to me than being honest, blatantly, openly honest about everything. So those those are just a, one set of values that's the opposite. So kindness versus assertiveness. Empathy versus having boundaries and appreciating boundaries. Uh, integrity versus being able to adapt and, you know, kind of having an adaptable set of uh, honesty characteristics. Um, Respect, self-confidence, responsibility, spontaneity. And these are just kind of opposites, not completely opposite, but they're different values that both can be good. People can, you know, you might prefer one over the other. Um, Tolerance versus strong conviction. Fairness versus mercy. Compassion versus tough love. Courage versus prudence. So what if you are strongly believing in one value and your central planners who run your social credit system have a different value that they think is more important? Well, that's not good to be judged on. So you might not care if a person is tactful or not. Let's just use that first example. You care about open honesty. That's what you really care about in your face kind of stuff. So you are looking at another human being and you want to know, Hey, what kind of person is this? And you look at their score and it says bad. Well, if you look into why it's bad, it's because the central planners thought that tactfulness was better. And even though this person is completely honest, absolutely everything you want, the central planners don't think so. So that can really get twisted. We don't each get to have our own preference. We can't uh, have the social credit system in China. You can't go in there and it doesn't ask you, oh, what do you believe, collectivism or individualism? Do you value honesty or tactfulness more? Um, They don't ask all these questions. They tell you, well, our experts, our central planning experts have determined, just trust us, you're not smart enough to make your own decisions. Trust us, we have determined that what will make you humans happiest is these the set of values that we think are important that we've built into our social credit system. Well, that ain't right. That's just plain wrong. That, yeah, that takes away all of your individual autonomy. Next thing is, is this freedom of expression idea, this, this idea that we should be able to say what we want to say. And yeah, there could be some immediate consequences. Um, you know, if, we, if we're rude, we walk up to somebody and call them a name while they're drinking, you know, we might get punched. There could be some natural consequences from people who uh, initiate violence and, and don't have a problem with that. But overall, 
it's good, I think, to be able to speak your mind about important things without feeling repressed about it, without feeling that you, you, you can't even, you can't express yourself to the rest of the world. Well, with a social credit system, you can only express those things that are agreed upon. And that is a real problem. Now, maybe you're in line with some of the things that the central planners say you should do, uh, or that is the correct answer. But maybe there are some areas that you disagree. Is it really a good idea to be in a system where you you can't be yourself and make your own decisions like that? I don't think so. That kind of social credit is bad because it's centralized. It's not voluntary. So if I'm saying that social credit is a good thing, what do I mean that it's good? Well, I think there are forms of it, natural, spontaneous reputations. Uh, eBay started this, I think. They were the one to start this many, many years ago. And I remember, gosh, it has to be 20 years ago or more that I was using eBay. And it was just amazing. You could look and see if you could trust other people. You could see what their rating was. And after every single purchase I made or sale I made, I would go in there and I would you know, uh, be very fastidious about writing a review for the person and rating them. And it was a complete reputation based thing. And now it's, it's all over the place with TripAdvisor and Google reviews and Yelp and everything has a review attached to it. And that is awesome. Now, can people mess with it? Can it be gamed? Can you, you know, hire a bunch of offshore folks to write good reviews about your thing? Yeah. Uh, but most companies want you to trust their review system. So they've set up systems so that uh, they try to catch as much of that junk as possible. So that is a great way. Letters of reference, whatever happened to letters of reference? Um, the idea that a, a trusted person in the community, or even a trusted person who you don't know, could write a letter just saying, hey, this is who I am. This is how I know Shepard. And this is the kind of man he is. Well, imagine if you didn't know somebody, but you don't know this person who's writing the letter at all, but you you ask me, well, Shepard, do you have any references? And I say, yeah, and I, and I hand you this letter and it says, my name's Zeke and I have a ranch in Colorado and uh, Shepard worked for me for three seasons. And by God, that guy was always there early. He would work his butt off. He never complained. He got stuff done. He wasn't all that handy with a welder, but my gosh, you should see that guy with a backhoe and whatever, write a whole letter recommending me or telling the truth about me. And if you receive that letter, and it's a genuine thing like that, not fancy college speak, uh, like resumes are all pompous up, but just like a real true letter, and it was handwritten or typed out and then signed by somebody, that carries some weight. Well, that is social credit. If I carried that around, I would say, hey, I'd, I'd like you to look at my eBay ratings, look at the the last business that I had. This is the uh, this is the TripAdvisor rating on it. Uh, this is this is the kind of organization that I I lead. This is what I make happen. The eBay is for my personal things. Um, and then you know, LinkedIn, go in there and look at recommendations or referrals or whatever they're called there. Like those kinds of systems, free market voluntary systems. What a great idea. Because it just makes sense that when you, you meet somebody new, it'd be nice if you didn't have to start all over. If you could kind of say, ah, you know what? Everybody in the community vouches for them. This is a cool thing. So there are some great solutions to having the government run the system. Now, the good thing about most of these uh, websites or apps or whatever that I'm talking about is that you get to choose what it is that's of value to you. Some of them will even have, you know, was the what did you think of the price? Rate it on a one to five scale. What did you think of the the facilities? Rank those on a one to five scale. What did you think about the personnel on a one to five scale? Well, and then whatever's more important to you, you can put that down there and then they average it out. So there, there are a lot of different ways that this can happen, that it's it's absolutely workable and and awesome. This is how it should be. I love I love that idea. That's a good thing. Let's keep that up. Now, the systems that are out there that are run by the, I don't know, the ruling class, I'll say that the, I don't know, the, uh, the, the college industrial complex, the uh, governments, the 
global governance, you know, like United Nations and World Economic Forum and that kind of stuff. Um, the, the people who run, oh, and I guess the politicians too and such, but the people who run the show, they can manipulate us. That's the challenge if they get to set all of this, the, the parameters on their social credit system. They get to manipulate us. They have excellent psychologists that have, have studied Bernays and all of the people who came after Bernays, and they understand public relations and neurolinguistic programming, psychology, all this stuff. They understand this, and they know how to bring certain things to the front or back, and, and they are rating you based on something that, I don't know, if you're going to have a system like that, it should at least be transparent. You should at least know that it is okay to tell racist jokes as long as you're telling them against or the, the butt of the joke is a white person, a white male. But if you're telling a racist joke about anybody of another color than the white color, then it's wrong. Well, at least I guess if you're going to have one of those horrible systems, if it's 100% transparent, that would at least be somewhat helpful. You would know how to pretend and only speak about the things that that were politically correct, I guess, or socially correct. It's a horrible idea still, but the truth is, even with that transparency, it still stifles a person. Take away the transparency. Most of these systems don't tell you everything. They don't tell you some of the things that you're being judged negatively about and ranked lower because of. So here you are trying to do your best and they're judging stuff that you don't even know that they're judging. That ain't right. So what are some of the unintended consequences that can come from having a system like this? Well, think about all the innovation. Think about the creativity. Think about the person who wants to do something big and new, and they're just afraid to because they're, they're afraid that it might hurt their social credit score. They're not willing to take that risk. Maybe the, the social credit is weighted heavily on working eight hours a day in the same job for 40 years. Well, that's going to kind of hurt entrepreneurs from working 18 hours a day for five years straight and then being able to take a break. And it, it would just put everybody kind of like a, a robot or something into this cookie cutter existence where nobody would want to step outside of what they imagine the box probably is. Not that you would even know all the, the borders of the box, but you, you wouldn't be able to, to stretch and, and jump and, and uh, try to go for the go for the top and you no, know, don't want to do any of that. You just want to stay in the middle doing what will keep you your points so that you're allowed to drive to see grandma for her birthday next month. And if you are doing some of the wrong things and your score is going to be too low and you're not allowed to travel, you're not allowed to have a, a road pass for that day to in your 15 minute city to, to go make your trek to see grandma. This is, this is scary, bad stuff. This is, this is not a good idea. And, and it's even worse as we think about the advancements in technology and how good these bad guys, these central planners can be at controlling people, at using social credit as a way to decide whether or not that person's allowed to get more gasoline, whether or not that person is uh, allowed to spend uh, more than a certain amount for a meal, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, can you imagine they're putting in health records and everything in China can you imagine if a person's overweight and based on what the government decides and the government decides, nope, they can't, they can't eat more than 2000 calories a day. Um, and therefore, if you go, you try to, you know, go buy more than that at a restaurant, nope, your card won't work. And then now you're in trouble. Now you're a, a fraudster because you ordered food and you're, you can't pay for it because you're using this central bank digital currency that is has the on and off switch attached to the powers who be uh, who are bad powers that isn't that scary i mean technology w would really make this tough at least with less technology a person can kind of get around the edges a little bit and still make life happen but if if the technology is big enough powerful enough man that, that really hurts us, the little folks, uh, in our ability to, I don't know, step out of the box a little bit. That's, whew, that, that, 
that scares me. Love technology. Technology is wonderful. I love AI. I love quantum computing. I love advancements in technology. That is just, that is awesome. And they can be used by some people for some really bad things, which I guess if I'm a pragmatic person, it would probably make sense for me to learn as much as I can about those tools so that I'm not going to a gunfight taking only a knife, right? That would make sense. Now, who would decide if these social credit systems come to the, the geographical area that is controlled by the United States government, uh, that's where I live, if they, would, if they would decide to have that happen here, where do you think they would make the decisions on what, is, what the values are, the things that are good and the things that are bad? Do you think that they would really, truly ask the people in an objective way, if they would ask the mob, the demos, whatever, to do it democratically, if they asked all 300 and whatever million Americans there are, hey, what do you guys value highly? What don't you? Well, that wouldn't be a good answer, would it? Because there are a bunch of people who might, uh, just because 99% of people value something different than me, doesn't mean they're right or that they should be able to impose their will on me. Well, that's not a good way to do it. So how else? Well, it would probably be looking at the experts. So just like cities, counties, states are doing for their their planning departments, for their uh, zoning and, and their their uh, starting businesses up or developing land, all this kind of stuff. Well, they just go and they look at this international model that some nice organization is nice enough to have the, the template ready for them, and then they can just implement it in their area. Well, this is exactly what uh, I predict if, if this whole centralized social credit system thing continues, I would certainly imagine that there would be organizations like the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, who would be nice enough to build a, a roadmap for prosperity, or they give it some name like that. And that would be a social credit system that they would encourage municipalities and states and, and countries to develop. And, and, oh, it's not a binding agreement. It's kind of like the the sustainability stuff. It's not a binding agreement. Oh, not at all. We're just, just offering you resources to help make the world a better place. Yeah. And then the, do you really trust these, these, I don't know, they're just so strongly biased. Maybe, maybe you love the United Nations or the World Economic Forum or the uh, Missouri Syndicate of the Lutheran Church or maybe you love fundamentalist um, Mormon thinking, maybe you are really into one of these things and you're really strongly biased toward it. I have strong biases toward things and away from other things. However, nobody is as biased like, that I know of. No one is as biased as are these big organizations like Council for Foreign Relations, World Economic Forum, et cetera, et cetera. They are so strongly biased. They love Marxism. They love communitarianism, collectivism. They love a return, a depopulation, a return to nature where they're, you know, what, what do they say? 500 million people on earth. And I don't think they're coming around planning to just shoot people in the head. Uh, I don't think that there's some big conspiracy like that. The, and the conspiracy conjecturists come up with all this stuff. And I don't know, I, I, I most of it is, I'm not believing. However, I do believe that there are people who deep in their heart say this planet can only handle so and so many people. And so if I love humanity, I need to try to do what I can to get the population to be that number. So what can I do? Can I, if, if everybody thinks that they're going to live long, healthy lives, then they're going to breed less. They're going to have fewer children. Well, what can I do to have them believe they're going to have longer, healthier lives. Well, I'm going to protect them from illnesses. They're, they're going to know that their kids will probably live to be old. Well, if I give them these vaccines to help them live longer, then now they don't have to go out and breed and have as many kids. And in some time, I think that it's possible to manipulate things like populations. Um, absolutely possible. Um, but this is the central planning thing that I, do you believe in depopulation? I don't. And there are these crazy beliefs that these big organizations have. And, and don't just trust me and don't definitely don't trust the conspiracy conjecturist and their alarmist crap. Don't go for that. Go look up 
United Nations. And don't look at anybody's reviews of them. Just go straight to the United Nations website. Look up what they're about. Read read deeply. Like when they say something like, uh, you know, we're, we're going to provide food for everyone. You need to read between the lines and say, wait a minute, is the United Nations, is this a farming organization? No, they're not going to farm the food. How are they going to get the food? Oh, they're going to take it from some people. Um, read between the lines and get, you know, think about the, the bottom of it, but don't trust these wackos who try to tell you that the, uh, this nonsense stuff, go to the world economic forum, sign up for their <laughs> horrible YouTube channel and listen to their stuff. It's, it's so shocking that it's unbelievable that people listen to them. Um, but get it from the horse's mouth, see what they have to say, see if you like it. And, and I suspect that you might end up agreeing with me that it is hogwash. It is absolutely horrible. It's not good for you or me or our great, great, great grandkids. Uh, it's not good for the world. It's just, it's a bad thing. Okay. So I'm against big centralized planning of social credit systems. So what do I think should happen? As I mentioned, I like the reputation, just the local reputation thing, writing reviews about people. Uh, take the time. If there's some people who do something, you know, pr professionals who do a really good job at something, take the time to go on LinkedIn and write something about them. Uh, the market will respond to behavior, uh, to our individual behaviors. If you are writing reviews for everything you do that costs more than $10, then that sends a market signal. Hey, folks like reviews, and there will be more of that. And the more of that there is, I think, the more that we can make our own decisions, the more that we can say, ah, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. We don't need your social credit system. Um, me, my, uh, as a libertarian leaning person, my neighbor, the conservative, the other neighbor over there, the, the progressive, we, we all kind of are happy just looking and reading into things. And when we see something about the person was really hard working and yeah, they'd yell at their family some and they'd, they'd beat the horse, but by golly, they get a lot of hard work done. Okay, well now the, the progressive knows what to think of that person and the conservative knows what to think of that person and the libertarian leaning person knows what to think of that person. Um, this is how it should be. This is how it should be on a smaller scale in communities. Now, speaking of communities, um, we need to talk soon about communities, uh, communitarianism, communism, communes. We need to talk about these words and what they mean. So we'll we'll get to that.